now for the next one. This is, you know, I basically my day job on a day to day basis. Best tips to boost build speed. I'm sure many of you guys have a lot of experience in this. First up, Heath, he's a pro at this. What do you got, Heath? Your best tip. Yeah. Yeah, products only grow bigger over time. So modularized builds to minimize the blast radius of changes. So for our example, we used to have a module full of highly interconnected generated GQL code. And any changes to this module required a three minute rebuild and block the rest of our app from building. So we created a separate public API module containing interfaces for our GQL APIs. And this allowed us to decouple our modules consuming the APIs from the modules building the generated GQL implementations. And then we later used Apollo's multi-module support to parallelize, bu parallelize building our generated GQL implementations, further reducing the blast radius of changes. I told you all this guy was a pro. All right, Emma, what about you? What do you have? Well, most commonly we profile the build. Uh, we profile how long Gradle takes to execute each phase of the build lifecycle and each build task. So we spot bottlenecks and potentially create tasks for custom build logic and see which ones can actually run in parallel. Another one would be that we use uh, always static dependency versions and not dynamic versions because those can add unexpected version updates. And that can also generate slower builds caused by Gradle checking for updates because by default Gradle caches uh, for 24 hours. Danny, what about you? For us, it's all about optimizing for what we're actually building on our current environment that we're moving to is using M1 machines. So everything has been you optimized for that, such as moving off of your normal JDKs and over to Liberica to get X64 support. On top of that, you have your caches enabled and things of that nature. And one of the ones that I had to prove out to everyone was reducing the number of agents you're using to build as opposed to expanding it out so that you can kind of specialize what each one's doing so you can maximize the cacheability that comes from those each individual ones. Josh, to wrap it up. So my answer is module, 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 more modules. That is by far the best, most productive thing we've been able to do. But it has to be independent modules. If you make two modules depend on each other, you've undone any good work that you did. The other trick that I recently just learned was making sure all of your JDK instances um, are the same one. So Android Studio, anything in terminal points to the same one. That actually saved me a bunch of time and the embedded version coming with Android Studio. All great answers. Let's see what the audience thinks. All right, we got Josh on the board. <laughs> Huzzah. You had him with module, 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 right? <laughs> All right.